Welcome to this introduction to Cameo. What is Cameo? Well, it's a MOS Newsroom interface to your Newsroom computer system. It's also an asset management system for the templates and images and movie files that are used within the Lucy messages in the Newsroom. It's also a content distribution. As a journalist uses a graphic, it publishes the contents to the playout devices as required. It's also our portal to the Access Graphics workflow system. It's four different things happening at the same time, all in one box. But this is more than just hardware. This is actually all about workflow. In a hub workflow, the graphics department will be designing templates. This includes defining what the look and the effects are for the templates, defining naming conventions, and then creating the templates. After that, they need to publish the templates. They'll create contexts in the Cameo server and then save the, into the Cameo server in the desired context. After that, they need to create the assets. Assets are what are dragged into the Lucy templates in Lyric. This means we need to define some image guidelines, define some naming conventions, and define file formats and some local storage space to keep the raw artwork before it's prepared to be put into the template system. Then, we also need to upload content to the access system. This includes defining what the library requirements are. For example, do we need headshots of everybody who's ever run for political office, or do we just need the current political candidates? After that, we need to upload those library assets up into Access. And then we also need to continue maintaining topical assets that go into the Access system. As far as the newsroom is concerned, they have their workflow too. It's pretty straightforward. They're going to be browsing for templates by launching the Lucy Browser tool and selecting a template. Once they've selected a template, they need to fulfill it. They're going to be inputting text in text field where it's required, and when they need artwork, they'll be utilizing the access system to gain artwork. They'll drag the composited graphic into a story by dragging the Lucy object into the script page, and then they need to save the script in iNews. From there, they're ready to go. During the show, if they need to modify items, they literally just need to go ahead and make their changes to the objects in the script by double-clicking them and then saving the script, and then the automated running order updates will ha happen automatically. The newsroom feeds the control room without ever actually having to talk to anybody. In the control room, they'll be monitoring the rundown. This means a couple of different things. For example, they probably are going to be observing the rundown throughout the day before the show, so they're aware of what graphic elements are being added to the show. Once they're comfortable with it, depending on your particular station's workflow, somebody needs to turn on the iNews monitor process, which is what scans the particular rundown to see what graphic elements are required. From there, they need to access the playout tools. What this basically means is to acquire the devices, meaning do they have their graphics playout devices? Do they have access to them? Do they have control? Because they may be in a shared environment. From there, they need to launch the proper applications, which in this case could be Lyric or Xclips or ISQ. From there, they want to get their running orders. They want to select the desired running order in their playback controller and then use it to queue up all the channels. This could be ISQ, this could be control error, this could be command. It could be any device, but they want to make sure that they have the running orders available to them in front of them and that their graphics are queued and ready for the show. From there, they're ready to play out to air, which is where they're taking their graphics to output through keystrokes, and also the running orders will follow any changes in the rundown. So anything that happens throughout the program is automatically updated. In order to get this process to work, we also have to upload Lyric templates into the Cameo server. It's fairly straightforward. Lyric templates can be built on playout devices or offline devices using Lyric software. They can be published to those Cameo servers without a problem for many of those devices. Important parts is to make sure that your images and objects and text fields have II updates selected and then a solid naming convention is chosen for the template names or the object names because that's what's presented to the newsroom. It needs to be clean, clear, and consistent for them. After that, we go to the scene graph and we're going to locate global light and then right click on it. This will bring up a right click menu. We want to choose moss from the right click menu. From there, that brings up the Cameo moss properties and what we're most concerned about right now is making sure we select the default channel. There's a field for the channel assignment in this lower third, we want our lower thirds to play out of channel A, so we're going to enter in A in the channel device. We're going to click the OK button to continue. From there, we're going to go to the File menu and choose File, Save to Cameo. This will bring up the Save to Cameo dialog box. On the left side is where we input information of our Cameo server name, 
the default context we'd like to use, the path we'd like to use, and also the file name. In other words, where is this message stored in the Lyric file structure? We also want to pay attention to the right side where we have metadata information. Most important is the title field. This is where the journalist is going to find the graphic. This is the name they search for. It's great to have a solid convention that's consistent so as they go looking for graphics they have a pattern to follow to find their materials. The more metadata you put into all of these fields, the better it's going to be because they have search tools to locate these assets. When that save is complete, the Lyric template and all the assets required are published up to the Cameo server. And again, this happens from the Playout device, or it can happen from the offline Lyric. Either device works the same way. Once that's done, then the template is now available in the newsroom system through Lucy, the Lyric Universal Control Interface, which is, in essence, the way that the journalist looks at all the contents that are stored in the Cameo server. This is their portal to Cameo. We also have to talk about how we upload assets to the Access newsroom system. Access is really a web page. What we want to do is log into Access. From there, we want to locate the Upload Content button. This is going to be defined Access based on user permission sets by clicking on the Upload Content link. That will bring up a separate window for content upload. Items can be uploaded in individual formats as JPEGs, PNGs, Photoshop files, TIFFs, bitmaps, as well as an archive group, in other words a zip file that may contain multiple files. Uploading assets to Cameo. This may not happen in every facility, but it's a web-based interface and it's cross-platform. Literally what needs to happen is the artist will have a group of files they want to upload to the system. They open up the web page. They literally grab those files and drag them onto the gray bar that says drop files here. That begins the ingest process of adding images to the Cameo system through this asset management tool. In the newsroom, they need to use all these assets and templates that have been put into the system. They'll literally locate their template. They'll open it by double clicking on it and then they're going to find their image field which can be identified by the little camera next to the entry field. Right click and select order access graphic. This will bring up the new access order field within Lucy which allows you to choose the type of graphic that you're going to create. In this example we're going to create an over the shoulder graphic and that's classified as a news creator. From there We'll take that straight into Access, and it'll bring us into our particular show and our particular templates. We're going to go and create a graphic. We use the zone searches. We put our search field in. We click Find and identify the graphic we'd like. Enter in the slug information in the headline field, and then we're ready to upload. By doing that, we click on the Broadcast button underneath the preview window. That'll initiate a render while the system creates our graphic for us and then returns back with a preview. Simply clicking on the Cameo button will send that graphic back to the newsroom system. In Lucy, you can click on the Preview button and you can get a proxy to see what that graphic actually looks like. It's always wise to confirm that graphic before you take it to air. Literally just drag that thumbnail into your script and it's part of the newsroom system once you save the page. Content distribution is also a key function of Cameo. As the journalist creates a graphic and drags it into the newsroom system, it goes with instructions to the Cameo server. The Cameo server is going to take that Lyric file and push it to the proper playout device as has been requested within the newsroom. Graphics sent to the devices are pushed across in Lyric. HyperX devices hold all the images and assets. Xclips devices get a BMML, which is a broadcast metadata markup language, which is literally an instruction on how to use the assets in Xclips. Running order updates are what happens when graphics and other items are requested throughout the show and changes are made. By default, newsroom systems generally create an XML file, which is a list of the running order items that are requested for that particular rundown. Those are passed over to the Cameo server system, which creates BMML, or Broadcast Metadata Markup Language, which is Chiron's own version of XML for making sure they manage the playlist properly. The way that happens is when the journalist changes the order of the script, that goes through the newsroom system, an XML file is generated. It's passed along to Cameo. Cameo will convert it over to the BMML format and parse it and create a separate BMML file for each playout device used in the production. That gets published at the playout devices. From there, the ISQ controller, or any other controller for that matter, will look to the playout devices and find that update of the BMML and manage that, and as that comes into the ISQ system, that's how running order updates happen on the playback controllers. 
Let's take a look at examples of graphics traffic in the control room. We've got a control room with four channels of graphics. We're going to queue them all up, but before we do that, let's explain it. We're going to use the four channels. So graphics A is going to be used for playing our lower thirds. Graphics B is going to be used for playing over the shoulder graphics. Graphics C is going to be used for full screens, which include maps and pictures, photographs. Graphics channel D is going to be used for double boxes and monitor wall animations. So let's queue up all of our graphics and see what that looks like. There's a good example. Now, as the production goes forward, different graphics get taken to air, sometimes in combination. For example, what we have now on the screen, the output of the control room is showing me graphics channel A and graphics channel B on air, so I see lower thirds and I see an OTS. The next graphic is going to be taking us out to a reporter in the field, and before we go there, we like to establish it for our viewers by using a map. So that's going to put graphics channel C on air. And while graphics channel C is on air, I know the next thing we're going to do is talk to our reporter, and graphics channel A isn't being used, so we're going to queue up the graphic that has the light bug on it for our reporter. But before we even get to that, we're going to be using graphics channel D with our remote reporter and our anchor in the studio. So now that graphic's on air. Next, they're going to be going to the reporter in the field with their lower third super. They're going to have her in the screen for a few moments, and then they're going to come back to a double box. And while we're on the double box, we're going to get ready for our next story, which is changing to an OTS for an on-camera reader in the, in the studio. So we're going to have the anchor with the OTS, and next we're going to get rid of everything else and queue up for other stories. So graphics channels A, C, and D can be queued for the next parts of the production.